Hello and welcome to the DARPA Launch Challenge. Astra will try to accomplish the first launch of the DARPA Launch Challenge, successfully delivering a payload into low Earth orbit from Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska on Kodiak Island. A successful payload deployment will garner Astra a $2 million DARPA Launch Challenge prize and set the company up for launch two, just days away from a chance at an additional $10 million. On Friday, Astra conducted the wet dress rehearsal, a practice session for all the key players involved in the actual launch attempt. The wet dress rehearsal involved fueling Astra's rocket one of three with RPX fuel and liquid oxygen and performing a practice launch countdown. Since then, teams in Kodiak have been performing pr procedures to recycle the rocket and prepare it for a launch attempt today. So here we are, unfortunately, Today, we uh, encountered some issues with the weather. The news is not very good, so uh, in order to fill us in more and explain where we are, we'd like to uh, introduce you once again to DARPA Launch Challenge Program Manager, Todd Master. Todd, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mike. So the, uh, the teams began the countdown today, uh, went into fueling the rocket, and uh, but the entire time we're assessing two major issues with weather. One of them is upper level winds. Right. The other is uh, thick clouds that can trigger lightning when the rocket passes through it, both of which are, are kind of showstoppers. They can be. Um, and, and either one of those cases, uh, both those conditions, triggered lightning is certainly is what we consider a mandatory condition. If we have cloud conditions that put us in a case where, where that is anticipated, uh, that is a, a no-go. Um, and, and we're, we're stopped for, for that day for launch attempts. Um, when it comes to uh, upper level winds, it's highly dependent on the actual sort of direction and speed of those winds and where it's coming. The team here at Astra takes data from a weather balloon that we, that we send up, um, assesses whether or not their vehicle is going to be able to stay on course and, and makes a, they, while it starts out as a red, it can turn back to green if the data is favorable. And today, uh, both of those factors were uh, not working in our favor. But, right. uh, but the Astra team has been working toward a launch. Right. So what we did today was we started our launch countdown, and it typically begins. The first thing we do before we even step into that count is to start with a uh, weather briefing. So we look through the what are the constraints today, what's the probability of violation of each of those constraints. Um, when we started that count, those weather uh, constraints were looking at, like I said, triggered lightning at a 90 percent probability of violation. And then, um, and then our, our uh, upper level winds were also a 90 percent chance of violation. Uh, again, they can change dynamically during the day. Um, the other things that we've seen that have changed a little bit more since we started are we're seeing uh, deteriorating weather conditions out on the pad from a surface level wind standpoint. Um, and while we probably haven't necessarily violated the, um, the criteria to launch, it definitely makes it harder for the launch crew who's preparing as we start to have higher winds and there's quite a bit of precipitation. I think you can probably have seen on one of our cameras earlier that um, we're getting, we're getting uh, the, the weather is deteriorating as the day goes on. Um, so the team at Astra is looking at uh, the probability they would actually be able to launch today, which was looking slim and getting slimmer based on weather. Um, but we're still trying to, to understand which issues we want to, res which, w how we can convince ourselves that the rocket will be ready to launch um, on, on today or a future launch attempt. So there are a couple of items that were still kind of hanging in the balance as a result of the wet dress rehearsal yeah. uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, and going a little further into uh, the count today, even knowing that you're not going to launch, could benefit uh, you and Astra. Yeah, that's right. So, so yesterday we conducted our wet dress rehearsal. We accomplished most of the goals of that. We had a few things that needed to be fixed as a result, um, relatively minor fixes, but things that um, you want to verify and make sure that they're safe um, and make sure it's going to help, help uh, be, be fixed adequately for the rocket to get to orbit. So, uh, so they implemented those fixes after WDR yesterday. And the intent was we were going to check those out during the countdown today in preparation for a launch at the end of the at the beginning of the window. Um, we know that the beginning to the end of the launch window today is is a likely scrub for weather. However, we've decided that we still want to proceed with um, a portion of our fueling operations and a portion of our countdown to verify those fixes that were made yesterday. And then um, then the intent would be to uh, remove the fuel and oxidizer from the rocket and and turn things around for another uh, launch opportunity. Right, that's right. So um, typically, you know, through, through the course of the countdown, we would load both fuel and oxidizer into the vehicle as well as pressurize the vehicle um, with, with helium. Uh, that operation takes quite a bit of time to get through and uh, it actually takes quite a bit of time to back out of after you're finished. So 
after the time that you fully loaded your vehicle, you've loaded it with cryogens, the vehicle has cooled down, you're looking at information about how the vehicle is responding, um, you've loaded it with fuel, you've loaded it with, with helium. Um, from that time that we decide uh, we like how it looks and we start to pull all those, all those commodities back out of the vehicle, it's several hours for the operation. And uh, from a safety standpoint and the prudent thing to do with knowing that you're going to have pad team that's engaged in these operations with deteriorating weather, the right thing to do would be knowing that you're looking at several hours and the weather is going to continue to get worse. Yeah. You kind of call it and, and not uh, put them through that. Yeah, so what we've decided to do today is in order to verify the system fixes that we made yesterday is um, go into a partial loading on the propellant. So we will load, we will load um, helium, uh, fuel, and oxidizer. And we'll make sure that all of the fixes that were put in place from, uh, as a result of WDR, are the integrity of those fixes is working well. Once we know that those are complete, um, we will back out of the fueling operation before we get to full fill on the vehicle. What that's going to allow us to do is decrease the amount of time uh, in fueling operations, decrease the amount of time in unfueled operations. And, and I, I should point out, when you're talking about the launch team on the pad, that team is not in place when we're doing the operations. Right. Prior, prior to fueling, they drop back to... Um, to a safe location uh, away, um, but they have to get back in once the vehicle is, is depressurized and defueled to, to prepare it for, um, you know, sort of uh, to take down the, the propellant system and be ready for another attempt later. Right. Well, so that takes us to the next question, which right. is, uh, where do you think that we stand in terms of the next launch opportunity? Yeah, that, that is a great question. So uh, the way that we have set this up is that every day we have, for the course of the window, DARPA basically had a 14-day window in which we had asked our team to be able to launch from, from the first day that we identified to the last day of the window. Uh, today is day 13 of that window. Um, we've had a series of, of good weather days, what we call green days. Um, we've had uh, about four of those. We've had a series of days that were marginal, where uh, we had mostly green conditions, but some that could be, um, could be analyzed depending on the day. And then finally, we had a few that were red. So um, tomorrow is looking like a red day. Uh, we're going to get through today's operation, see how that goes, and assess from there. OK. So in order to track where, when the next uh, possible launch opportunity is, folks should continue to follow DARPALaunchChallenge.org. That's right. So we will have that right on the website, basically showing when, when we expect our next launch opportunity to be, and uh, that, that is the best place to find that information. Okay, great. great. Thank you very much Thanks, for explaining Mike. it. Okay. Appreciate it. Take care. And that's all we have for you today. Once again, tune in to www.DARPALaunchChallenge.org for the latest information on the next launch opportunity. Thank you very much.